evening, everybody, and welcome to Stimula Live. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. If we haven't met before, my name is Erica Rand Silverman, and I am a literary agent at Stimola Literary Studio. And we do a series of live events. Uh, if this is your first, um, I invite you to come check out our website, stimolalive.com. And on that website, uh, you can access all the past events, and these events range from conversations uh, between publishing professionals for adults, uh, for educators, and for parents, and for aspiring bookmakers, uh, as well as events for children directly. There's live readings and activities and workshops. Uh, and if you're a YouTube person, you can also go to our YouTube channel, uh, Stimola Live, uh, and you can see all of our events there as well. Uh, and if you have an account, or even if not, I think you can like our channel below. The more likes, the more people get to see the amazing content that we offer for free. Uh, and it's always inspiring and wonderful, and so we love to get the word out about it. Tonight, I am so absolutely thrilled to have the team behind the incredible picture book, H is for Harlem, which is right here. Look at this book. Uh, we have the highly acclaimed author, Diana Johnson, and the highly acclaimed folk artist, April Harrison, and their publisher, Christy Ottaviano, here to talk to you about this book, which has received five star reviews. And for those of you who work in publishing, it's not easy, even easy to get a review these days. And that's the truth. So to get five star reviews, is extra special, and I think you'll see why uh, as they talk to you about the project. I'm gonna bring everybody in. First, Dinah. Hi, Dinah. Hi, everybody. And April. Hello. Hi, April. Hi. And Christy. Hi, everyone. So I'm gonna leave you all to it. I'm gonna be on the back end listening along and working the chat. So everybody make sure to tell us where you're here from and make sure to comment and ask any questions at all because we'll have time at the end for that. Okay, Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erica. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Ottaviano. I'm vice president and publisher of Christy Ottaviano Books, which is an imprint of Little Brown and Company. And I'm so happy to be here today with Dinah Johnson and April Harrison to talk about this amazing book, a book that I feel so privileged to have worked on. Um, Dinah and I have published many books together. And uh, so it's, you know, we've had a long history and April and I, this is our first book together. So it's also um, a new history for us. And what I thought I would do is um, ask April and Dinah a few questions that will, I think, give you a little bit more foundation for the evolution of the book. And then we're gonna look at some of the images from the book together. Um, and then there will be time for questions. Um, so I think I'm gonna jump right in and ask both Dinah and April to talk a little bit about the inspiration for the book. Um, specifically, Dinah, what inspired you to write this book? And what can you tell us about your association and your experience with Harlem um, before writing this book? And has that changed um, in the process of working on this book? Hi, everybody. I'm really happy to be here tonight with April and Christy. And yeah, I was in New York, Christy. I don't know if you remember this. We had an appointment and we had to cancel the appointment for some reason. And I went to the New York Public Library and I went to the gift shop and I noticed that there were so many picture books about New York City, but none of them lingered on Harlem. So it's like, wow, that's a big gap that needs to be done. Um, and of course, I've, I've always loved Harlem. I went to college and grad school in, in New Jersey and in Connecticut. So I went to New York often and just loved the vibe of Harlem and spent lots of time there. April, can you talk a little bit about your experience with Harlem before working on this book and um, how did it change in the process of creating the images for the book? Hello everyone, I'm April. Um, my experiences with Harlem was strictly seen through a visual artist's eyes. Um, I used to do the fine art show at the Pup Center in um, New York. And um, I started 
touring Harlem for the first time with an artistic eye. I was looking for the murals of the WPA and the Harlem Hospital. I'm looking for the statues that are outside, like Swing Low from um, Allison Saar. You know, I was looking for all the artistic and um, anything that would enhance the senses. The food, Sylvia's, I, used to, I went there. I used to travel every mode of transportation I thought a Harlem night would take, I would do it. I just loved Harlem. I just loved it, loved it, loved it. So um, I was really thrilled when I was approached to do the book, H is for Harlem. It was a real honor. I couldn't wait to just get in there and start creating rich tapestry because of the iconic people and the places that are Harlem. And you know, April just mentioned Sylvia, and Sylvia was a South Carolinian. So <laughs> you'll, you'll notice that, that I've sprinkled references to South Carolina throughout the book. Throughout, yeah. But you have to let everyone know both um, Dinah and April live in South Carolina. So, um, special place um, like Harlem. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about um, just your backgrounds. I think that, you know, you you both bring so much to your work um, uh, through, you know, your life experiences and your, 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 your backgrounds. And I just wanted to ask a little bit about, you know, um, your path to your craft um, and you becoming a writer, Dinah, and obviously becoming an artist, April. Um, I'll start with you. April, just to, can you just talk a little bit about, um, you know, when you you started creating art? You talk about being a fine artist. When did that really um, set in? I know you had a very different path to, um, uh, you know, um, to where you are today. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Um, initially, I had dreams of being an artist, but back in the day, no one favored uh, artists because they felt that artists could not make money thus the starving artists. So I had to go into a field. I selected nursing. I did nursing for a while. I became a medical claims reviewer after that. Um, and then in 91, um, my mom passed and I began to create art. I began to paint. I think it was a form of therapy for me. And in 97, I was approached by a gallery that was opening in Greenville, South Carolina for the first time. And they asked me to do um, some paintings for their opening. I didn't have anything ready, but I always believe in being ready when opportunity knocks. You know, get ready later. Let's say yes to opportunity. I'm like Alexander Hamilton. I'm not going to miss my shot. <laughs> However, after that, I just did the final. And in 2019, 18, I was approached by Random House to actually start doing um, illustrations for children's books. Yes. And no, I was I of that, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. I saw that beautiful book that you you illustrated, um, and that would you know was um, extremely uh, impressed upon me. Um, you know what what you could do with emotion. Um, excuse me, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on because I wanted to. I also would like to talk about what you you bring. Um, uh, what you bring in terms of emotion to the images in Ages for Harlem. Um, but just to um, close the circle on this question, Dinah, can you um, talk about your path to writing? And uh, were you always writing, even as a child? And um, and and how did how just whatever you can tell us about your you know your exploration of writing? Okay, yeah. Well, I'm a child of South Carolina, but I'm also from a military family. We lived all over the world and there were just these amazing women who worked for the Department of Defense at military bases all over the world. And my sixth grade teacher, Miss Carol Johnson, had us do creative writing every week. And that's when I started writing and started thinking of myself as a writer. And my parents always gave me the space to write. I would still have to do my chores, but they would let me write You know, when I was in that zone. So, and then I went on to college and majored in English and creative writing. And my senior thesis was a collection of poetry that was inspired by a trip I took to West Africa during the summer of my sophomore year in college. And maybe one day that will become a, a book for young adult readers. Um, yeah, so my life has always revolved around words. 
And also, can you talk a little bit about um, the other hat you wear as an edu as an educator um, of children's literature? Yeah, sure. When I did my PhD, my research for my dissertation was on the history of African American children's literature. So, mm -hmm. so that that history is dear to my heart, and I teach courses at the University of South Carolina on children's literature and young adult literature. And can you just talk a little bit about, you know, how that has informed your writing in terms of staying on top of um, the industry or, or do you not, do you try not to pay too close attention to that so that it doesn't um, get in the way of your writing? I'm curious about how you navigate that path. No, I definitely pay attention to it, but it's not in my mind when mm -hmm. I'm writing as Dinah. Right. Um, I think it would interfere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it seems like you, you know, you have that duality, but you do have to try to keep them both in check, right? So one doesn't sort of infringe on the other, but they inform each other, right. nonetheless. <clears throat> um, I would love to ask April some questions about, you know, I feel like um, as, as your publisher and editor, I often get asked very specific questions about how you create your art. And I thought it would be really interesting before we dive into the images um, if you could just talk to us a little bit about your process and how you go about really from the sketching phase to, um, you know, the different layering uh, that you do when you actually create the art and the collage and um, even the minutia of what, you know, the medium you work in and do you work on, you work on board, don't you? I do. Okay, you work. Tell us a little, tell us about your process. Well, actually I, I work on illustration board, but when I did the, this book, I handled it a little different. I worked in segments because it was so oh extreme yeah. from A to Z. And it was so many iconic buildings and iconic people. I wanted to really represent them all. So what I did is I just took days and months to just do the buildings, just all buildings. I'm going to do all the buildings that Donna mentioned in the book um, to give them the justice. And it's interesting because before <laughs> this book, I have never drawn buildings. You know, I'm a people person. I draw images of people. So this that was a challenge to do the iconic buildings, I must say. So I took a lot of time on them from sketch to final phase, and I did it on Bristol board. So I did them all with um, acrylic paints, artist markers, um, and artist pens. So I finished all the buildings first, months. That took months. Then I went in and did the, the actual people. and. Before I did the people, I was only going to do the buildings, to be honest, um, and then maybe have, have text of the people's names that the, were influenced, you know, or who worked in the building or who had something to do with the building. But then I thought, why not honor these people? Why not put their gorgeous faces on the cover or in the pages of the book? And so I normally don't do portraits. I shy away from them because I'm really not good at it, I've been told. Anyway, no. but I decided to do portraits. And so it was a lot of portraits to do. And so I did all of them at the same time. And then I would do any odd, odd straight thing that happened. I would then um, go ahead and paint them. They were already painted. Then I would affix them to the actual illustration board. Now, the illustration board was already um, completed, meaning that I always start each painting as an abstract. So the abstract work was there. So all it was waiting for was the images to go onto the page. So then I affixed it with acrylic, um, what is it, medium. I affixed it to the pages. Um, and then from there, I added any detailing, any collage elements, anything that would really make those images pop right off the page. So that's how I did this particular book. So it, it took a little while longer um, than I'm normally used to. You know, what's so interesting is I remember early on we were talking about this because you know, it's. I have done a, a fair number of alphabet um, structured picture books um, over the years. I, I published a book called B is for Brooklyn, uh, that was um, a similar in, in structure. And um, one of the things that can be very challenging is to try to because you're not working with the same character on every page, and every page is is really its own page. Mm -hmm. um, is is trying to capture that emotion and. Um, 
uh, you know, bring the reader uh, through each page and each page turn um, and keep them engaged. And I remember when we were speaking about that, I think I was just really commending you for being able to do that so effectively. And then through the portraits that, um, you know, are, are so powerful and stunning. Um, and you had said to me that you actually found the episodic nature of this book and this project really freeing. Um, you know, different from, you know, uh, taking uh, one character and um, carrying the book through with that one character. Can you talk a about that a little bit? Um, it was freeing because I realized that each particular page would be its own little painting, original painting. I didn't have to worry about repeating that. I just knew I wanted to give it all I had into this one little page for each characteristic, each iconic building listed. Um, and I and I realized that I appreciate that type of work. So, you know, if you're listening, no, I just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there are others in the future. <laughs> Duly noted. Um, <laughs> um, Dinah, I wanted to ask you about, you know, your process for um, really crafting uh, the alphabet structure. And, you know, to me, it, it would seem so challenging to try to distill um, Harlem, you know, uh, down to just, you know, uh, you know, the 23 letters. And how mm -hmm. did you make those decisions, especially with letters that would have more, uh, certainly than one really important subject? Um, you know, what was your editing process going through that even before, you know, I entered the picture? You know, that's a great question, but can I go back to the first, uh, the last question you asked <laughs> of me? Of course. Because what I didn't mention was that there were some amazing people here at the University of South Carolina when I got my job offer here. And one of those people was Augusta Baker. And April is actually doing a children's book about Augusta Baker. And for people in the audience who don't know who she was, she was a pioneering African-American librarian. So she was head of children's services for New York Public in the days when the children's book world was called the all white world of children's mm -hmm. books, right? And she helped to change that. Of course, she was friends with everybody, Maurice Sendak, you know, not just African-American writers and illustrators, but she did help to change that landscape. So I just want to say that I feel honored now as a writer to be part of that number and feel honored as a scholar to help preserve that history, right? So I just wanted, I just felt like I needed to get that in there. Um, so thanks for allowing me to do that. Um, and as for your next question, yes, it was so difficult. So I just, you know, I just wrote out the alphabet and started writing numerous, um, you know, numerous ideas next to each one. And it was so difficult to do, which is why, I mean, April will tell you, <laughs> there's so much packed in I know. I know. each one of those passages. So it's not an alphabet book like A is for Apple, right? There's right. just so many things. And there are a few pages, I think S is one of them, where I list a whole bunch of things yes, and then I say, <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, it, so it had to be a double page spread, you know, and then it lands on on Arthur Schomburg, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the Schomburg Center, which is so important. So I learned so much about Harlem because, you know, a lot of us, you know, we wander around our hometowns True. and we really don't know the history of those places. So I'd spent many days and weeks in Harlem, but I learned so much from this book. So I mm -hmm. hope that it will whet the appetite of readers and they will learn much more also. This is a great time, I think, to turn to the art. So Erica, if you can um, uh, cue up the images. Um, and uh, there's the cover. And why don't we move uh, to, um, actually, what I would love to do is ask April and Dinah, um, you know, what their favorite images were from the book. We can go through to the next slide. Um, uh, which is, uh, AS oh, this is the beautiful case cover. Um, April, do you want to talk a little bit about that? This is one of my favorite images in the book, and I really wanted it to be the case cover just because I just think it's so powerful that at one point we were even talking about this for the, the actual cover of the book. Um, uh, 
I just, April, do you want to talk about, um, I mean, that was completely your direction. Um, you know, um, I had an opportunity to create the Statue of Liberty at, in New York. And I wanted to give it my vision of how I saw her and saw how, how I saw New York. And I think it really was influenced by um, the people of Harlem and the seeds they planted there and the richness and the culture. And I just had to do her the way she's seen right now. Um, she has been referred to online as their initial Statue of Liberty was considered, um, she was a penny color. Um, when she was first erected and then of course the weather has eroded her and now she's the patina that you see today the bluish green looking color um but i wanted to take her back to her roots and so i made her a beautiful penny brown and and i just loved doing it i love the backdrop um i've always loved to see that backdrop of new york um so it was a real honor to do that i've had requests to actually do this as a um a print yeah by people, um, so I'm considering it, but, but not right now. Anyway. <laughs> Too many things on your plate. It's such a beautiful image. It's absolutely one of my favorite in the book. Um, let's go to the next one, A is for Apollo. Um, can, can I first say though, that it's so thrilling as a writer to, to see what an illustrator does with the words that you put out there, what, you know, how your words, inspire an illustrator to because you know i i didn't know this image was going to be in the book it's it's gorgeous it's breathtaking and it's actually the image for and is for new york city we just um sort of encapsulated the image and put it also on the case cover that's it for those of you who don't know what a case cover is it's just the um underneath the jacket you can also have a different image um and so if you take off the jacket you have this beautiful surprise case cover um, A is for Apollo. Any thoughts, you guys? Any any uh, any particular comments related to this beautiful piece? I'll go. Um, <laughs> A is for Apollo started my vision. It's what made me create the images because I could not do that. I could have just did the Apollo theater and I could have just shown the rock, the stone and everything like that. But the characters kept begging to be seen, you know, and then I'm looking at Donna Rose and I'm thinking she mentioned the Jacksons. She mentioned Aretha Franklin. Oh, my goodness, Jennifer Hudson. What am I going to do here? And so I really took time to create them. And um, and I'm glad I did now. Um, because I, I, that's one of my favorite, actually. A is for Harlem. Not only is A for, I mean, A is for Apollo. My, my bad. Not only is A for Apollo, but A is for April. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> of course, this would be my fave. <laughs> um, oh, well, let me do one thing. Just one thing, real quick. I love working with Saho, um, the art director of this book. She allowed me to keep the intensity of my color in each and every page. You know, I was so appreciative of that. What she did is she shadowed out and um, ghost out some of the, the texture under all the words, but she allowed the remaining parts to be seen brightly. And I just really appreciate that. I just had to say that. Thank you, Saho. You're great. No, I actually wanted to call out not only Saho, but Nemeche is, is a production editor who works behind the scenes on the color and Patrick Collins, a designer who I have worked with for years. I worked with him when I was at Macmillan. Um, he did a lot of that um, touch up screening as well because we didn't want to lose the intensity of the color, but we did have a lot of challenges with the art itself and printing the text over it. So I had an amazing, amazing team to work with. Um, and uh, every one of them really contributed so much. I mean, we did probably six rounds of color proofing on this book uh, to get everything right. And um, I really, I feel like those every, you know, we, we just, it was a painstaking process to get it exactly how we wanted it, but it, it really came together beautifully. It did. And that's why I always say team Harlem. Yeah. So yeah. We, it was just a great team. Great team for sure. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, this is such a beautiful one. Yeah, I, I, I didn't read um, Cicely Tyson's autobiography, so I didn't know until she died and saw the obituary that she was one of the founders of Dance Theater of Harlem. Mm -hmm. So April, do I remember correctly that you actually reworked the art or did we already know before? No, we actually, we did go in and redo it because right. we left her out initially. Right, and so we, we reworked the text and the art to make sure art. she was represented and we had the history down right. I mean, we, we were doing research for this we thing. Were, yes. The last <laughs> it was so much fact checking. I mean, we had, it was, you know, it was, a, um, again, a lot of people involved and uh, there was a lot of fact checking and research down to the, you know, to get it all right. I mean, but that's the process. I mean, it, that's I, actually, I, I love that process. I mean, it, each, each stage is you see things differently. What you see in the first layout round is so different in what you see in the fifth layout round versus what you see in the first proofing. And, you know, by the time you're in the fifth proofing, you're looking at different things. So you're constantly, um, uh, you know, evaluating based on where you are in the process. Um, uh, but yeah, there were, I'm trying to think of some of the other, um, let's advance a slide. Um, well, can we stay, can we stay there for a second? <laughs> I just, I just want to say that I, I also was a dancer. So, you know, who had been told when I was young to like tuck under, you know, and at a certain point you can't tuck under an African behind, right? So <laughs> I, I really appreciate the bodies of the dancers that April drew. And I love the different complexions of the people all the way through the book. You can see the dancers have different um hairstyles so i just want to say i especially appreciate your dancers april <laughs> well thank you and one other thing i use the old building um the dance theater of harlem because it's such an iconic building um because i understand they're now in a some other type of high rise not a high rise but a different type of building i don't think it's the same yeah. hmm. no. but i use the old reference because it, that is that's that's that is the dance theater of Harlem. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. This piece. Wow. So this is uh, you know I, I remember you were sending in um, partially finished pieces, April. You were taking sort of photographs with your phone. And I do remember that parts when you were you talked about doing the buildings first and and then uh, going in and, and it was interesting to see these, you know, um, uh, move through that completion. Um, I just think this piece is so powerful. Can, can I say something about this piece too? It was really, really important for me to acknowledge the history of Harlem and to acknowledge that Native Americans were on this land first. Right, so I did check with a, a Native American scholar of Native American studies to get the wording right. And she's the one who told me to use American Indian. So, you know, I'm conscious that different Native groups use different terminology. But um, so I hope that, I hope that what we settled on doesn't offend anybody. I, I I did the research to the best of my ability. Um, and, and I know that, so I know the history of Harlem has changed over the years and it's still changing, but in my heart, Harlem is always Black Harlem. <laughs> um, but I love, love, love this page. Yeah, me too. Oh, I, I know that you wanted to talk a little bit about this page, April. Um, uh, you know, th this, uh, in recreating um, images that um, appear in the Studio Museum, um, there was a lot of research involved in this piece and also permissions uh, that we had to clear in order to um, recreate these pieces. April, do you wanna talk about where you tucked in your own work? 
Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That is a secret. <laughs> yeah. And firstly, I would just like to say this was a challenge for me to recreate the original um, paintings and sculptures from the actual artists. Um, and I just, I look forward to doing it. I thought it was a, just a lot of fun to do actually. Um, and so you're right, we did have to get permission. One of my favorite artists was represented, Romare Bearden. Um, my tucked away art is on the right side in back of, um, who is this at? Lorna Simpson's A-E-I-O-U. It's right behind that. You'll see three images on the back wall and those are actually some of my original paintings. Because I said, wow, I might not ever get a chance <laughs> to show my work at the Studio Museum of Art in Harlem. So let me just, what? <laughs> take my shot. <laughs> I'm always gonna take my shot, but anyway. So I took my shot and put them in there. And I was hoping upon hopes that uh, <clears throat> Christy or anyone would say, wait a minute, what is that in the bag? Whose paintings are those? But um, <laughs> you know, I didn't tell them it was mine. I just presented the piece, you know, and we went from there. Well, we didn't have to clear permission for those, so we we kind of yeah. knew they were yours. <laughs> we didn't have to clear, and I was thankful they were included. Yeah, I do always try to sneak something in on every book that I do. It's always secrets within the book, and those secrets are always personal to me. And you know what I love that you do, too, that in each large letter on a page, mm -hmm. there's at least one face. Like this art is so multi-layered. Like you can look at this book so many times and see something new every single time. But, but I also wanna say on this page, I love these old girls, you know, looking at the <laughs> art because they're in their Sunday best and they have on their patent leather shoes. And it's just a beautiful way to incorporate young people into the art, into the book. So true. true, so true. Um, P is for photographers. Yeah, and the same thing with that. I actually went and researched on a, um, and researched some of the images per photographer. Um, I was, I, I knew about one of the photographers, James Vanderzee, but I did not know about the um, Hanson guy um, until Donna, you know, mentioned him. And so I had to research him. I had never heard of him. And so I looked at some of his photographs. And so I, I selected my faves. Okay. And then I recreated those and tried to keep it as true to that time period as possible um, by creating them in the black and white Sienna type look. And, and this is a very special page to me because Austin Hansen was the father of Joyce Hansen, who is an acclaimed writer of books for young people. She's won the Coretta Scott King Award numerous times. Her books have been in print for decades and decades, and so many children have benefited from her work. And she's actually working on a biography of her father now. So, you know, and she's always getting requests to, to, to get permission to use his work. So his work has been really important in the history of Harlem and the Schomburg has tens of thousands of his images. Mm -hmm. And I was just so pleased that, that I had the sense to put both of them under P for photographer <laughs> instead of, you know, just B for Vanderzee, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm so, um, you know, just pleased that Austin Hansen is depicted in this book. And look for look for Joyce Hansen's work. She's she's still mm -hmm. writing. Oh, and here's Schomburg. It's another one of my favorite images from the book. Your portraits are amazing, April. I don't know whoever told you that you couldn't do portraiture. I mean, it's wonderful. The people who didn't want to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> it was like. I'm, no, no, that's not me. I say, yes, it is. But it didn't work, so I just gave it up. But in this particular, I know a lot of people say, who's the guy, who's the boxer there? Um, and I, his name is Harry Wills, okay? They, he's the box around 1932 or whatever. And he used to live at the, the um, what are we saying? I can't, Strivers Row. He was one of the um, tenants 
at Strivers Row. And they used to call him, his nickname was the Black Panther. Isn't that interesting? You know, I'm just a fan of the Black Panther, so just forgive me. But, <laughs> but his nickname was the Black Panther. And then you have Clayton Powell behind him. You have Mr. Bojangles um, on the right side of those two. Um, of course, you see the Savoy with the dancers, um, some of my favorite images. And then you have, again, a piece of my artwork from my original collection. The little boy there that's looking at the, um, let's see, the painting. That also is one of mine from my archives. So I snuck another one in there. And, and as a scholar of African-American culture, you know, the Schomburg is just the place. So, um, and, and you know, a lot of their stuff is accessible online also. So mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with the Schomburg, become familiar with the Schomburg. It's a mm -hmm. treasure chest. Yes. Absolutely. They also have our book there now. Did you know they're selling the book there at the Schomburg? Yes. Yeah. It's so on their amazing. website, in their bookstore, their online bookstore. Right. Harriet Tubman. I, I don't know if um, the audience can see this closely um, through the visual, but if you look very close at um, Tubman's dress, there are these faces, uh, these sort of um, uh, reaching out, sort of um, very expressive faces coming through her skirt. Um, if you're holding the book in your hands and, and looking at this, it's magnificent. Can, can I say a word about, oh, go on April. No, I'm just gonna say about the faces, the different um, slavery tools that were used to, um, to um, get us to submit. Um, that was important to me. At first, the skirt was just green and I had little cute little objects in it just to depict what I thought was in the skirt. And I was gonna let that ride, but something told me to go in closer, go to Allison Sars page, check it out, see what is actually in that skirt. So I had to keep blowing it up until I saw it and I was amazed. You know, I saw it um, before when I visited Harlem, but I didn't know it was that detailed. So it would just blew my mind. And so I made myself sit there and just actually do the images and all the things that I saw, the tools of torture, I put all that in there as well. Because it was that thing, if you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> represent, you're going to rep represent Alison Starr's work, then represent it correctly. And and I got some nice feedback on this, on this entry. Um, the end of it says... Um, that Tubman is facing south, reminding us that Harriet Tubman was, that, that, that the statue is facing south, reminding us that Harriet Tubman was always thinking about the people she led from south to north, from mm -hmm. slavery to freedom. And um, someone I know from Harlem told me that it always bothered her that the statue was facing south and that she liked what I wrote about it and you know how I conceptualized what was going on there. So. Yeah. So it's, it's nice to get good feedback on what you've written. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, Madam C.J. Walker. Well, she's such an interesting person. I mean, Dinah, can you just say a little bit about her? I didn't know about her before working on this book. And she uh, was such a role model and um, a philanthropist and just so interesting. I thought maybe you want to mention a little bit about her. I, th I think like most African-American women know Madam C.J. Walker. There there have been a couple of, well, my favorite documentary about her is called Two Dollars in a Dream, but also there's been a feature film about her that's very popular. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't care about the hair care stuff. I care about her philanthropy and about her genius as a businesswoman. So, um, and also just the way that she, um, you know, she was a central figure in Harlem and brought together a lot of people. Um, but, but mostly as a role model, you know, there's some dispute about whether or not she's the first 
American woman who was a self-made millionaire, but she, if, if she wasn't the first, she was one of the first. Mm -hmm. So not the first African-American woman, the first woman in America. So I'm, um, yeah, so she's just inspiring as a, you know, so many times we hold up athletes and entertainers and they're very, very important for all kinds of reasons, but a female businesswoman is inspiring as well. Absolutely. Oh, the, <laughs> we can see. Yeah, we can move on. We can go to the next one. And this was interesting. So, in the earlier stages of this manuscript, when we were working on it together, there was no sort of ending uh, to the, um, you know, sort of ended um, uh, without sort of a, a final sort of spread to bring closure. And uh, I just gave Dinah a note to, you know, try to um, bring it around and bring closure to this, um, you know, really cel cultural celebration. And uh, she came back to me with this, which I just think is so, you know, poignant. And, uh, and then the image just, it all just brought it home. And, and I just want to say thank you for that, Christy. You know, because sometimes people don't always understand the collaboration between all the people involved. So this was Christie's genius to say you have to, you ha you have to have. You have to. <laughs> well, no, but it's a great suggestion, and it yeah. makes you know the, the book wouldn't be the same. I don't think without it. Thank you for that. Um, I just it just sort of again I feel like it just brings it all home and brings it back to family, community. Um, one of the things I just wanted to mention from um, a design place is um, the sky in this particular uh, spread. Initially, um, Erica, if you wouldn't mind just going back to the cover. So, you know, probably like eight or nine slides back to the cover. Um, that particular blue, that thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Initially, when we were, so we have sort of a, um, a, a you know, we have a process um, at Little Brown. Most publishers have a process where you share different jacket concepts to um, sales and marketing. And, um, and you go in with two or three different uh, ideas. Um, we had already gone through many ideas and landed on um, the H within the H uh, and this design. But um, what... Uh, what went through and was cleared um, and was given a, a green light was that blue background that was from that last image. And um, I think you both saw it. I know April certainly did. It was beautiful, but it was, I just, you know, I think we did, we did a round of proofing, um, maybe even two rounds of proofing. Cause I know we were, uh, we spent a lot of time, the H, the small H is embossed, which, you know, um, which means it sort of, it pops out a little bit. It has a dimensionality to it. And we were working on that, trying to get it right. And something was just not sitting right with me about the, how the cover was working. And I always feel like I get my best ideas when I'm uh, I, I'm a runner. When I go out to jog, it's sort of when my I feel like I just can think freely. And one day I was like, the jacket has to be black. It, it needs to be black. It would be the best representation for the book. And that, in in terms of the um, uh, publishing world, you know, uh, black jackets on picture books are not really, uh, they're not really a popular choice uh, when you're bringing them to uh, a jacket meeting. And uh, basically just because they're, you know, I mean, uh, they're just, you know, it, it obviously depends on the image, but they're darker. And I wasn't sure how, uh, you know, Saho, the art director I was working with, loved the idea. And then we brought it to the jacket meeting and everybody loved it immediately. And they just felt like it was it was right for the book. So that was a really um, a, a, a nice jacket evolution that came together. And, and I've heard um, from many people uh, just how much they love the jacket and they feel that, you know, the black background allows the artwork to really um, be front and central. Um, yet it's very reflective of the book itself. So. Um, I'm really proud of that. I think it came together beautifully. Um, I thought we would, you know, um, move to any questions. If if the audience has any questions, um, uh, I know uh, Dinah and April would love to um, 
answer any that you have. So um, if you wanna put those questions in the chat, that would be great. Um, and I just, while you're thinking, I just wanted to ask Dinah and April if they had any questions for each other. Now that the book is out and selling in the world and, you know, do you have any uh, questions or comments that you wanted to pass on to one another about making the book? Uh, I have one. <clears throat> Dinah, I'm so thankful um, that you reached out, you and Christy reached out to um, see if I would be interested in doing the book. Um, you made that extra effort also, and I really appreciate that because I love Harlem and I really wanted to do the book, but I was a little short on time, I guess, kind of, but you guys insisted that you wanted me to do it and I had to do the book. And I really appreciate you doing that, going that extra mile for me because um, looking back now, I would have regretted not doing this book. And so I'm so thankful. I think it's like one of my faves now. It's like really way up on top of me. <laughs> it is, it's like really up there, it's my baby. I call it my baby. And so I just really want to thank you for that. Um, for not letting me pass by such a rich opportunity. So well, thank, thank you. you for accepting it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I really can't imagine it with anyone else's artwork. I mean, the, the way you conceptualized it is just amazing. Yeah. I and I just want to add a footnote that this book traveled through two publishers. So I acquired this book when I was at Macmillan and um, I, I worked at Macmillan for 28 years and during COVID I moved over to Little Brown and I took um, this book with me. So it started out at Macmillan, but it um, was published by Little Brown and I'm so thankful that I was able to take it. Um, I can't imagine what it, I'm just, I'm just so thankful that I was no, able I, to I would have had to cancel the contract <laughs> with them if, if it had <laughs> Because I trust you, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm I'm really thankful that that Christy has had faith in my work all these years because my work hasn't always gotten the attention both of us hoped it would. Even though we stand behind that work, those books are beautiful books. Absolutely. So, so, so I hope that maybe the the popularity of um, of H's for Harlem will make people take a second look at some of those books. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure. But um, yeah, I, I can't imagine having done this book with another artist or another editor. So thank you both. Yes, thank you. And it was what? my first time working with you, Christy. So it's been a I real- know. I, I know. don't want to be my last time. So just remember that. No, well, I, you got a deadline with me, girl. So <laughs> get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, that's what I wanted to ask. I thought we could sort of just um, close if there's no questions with, you know, what do you guys have on deck? I know, Donna, you've got a book coming out with Harper. We have a book together coming out on Ida Wells. Can you talk a little bit about those books quickly? And, and April, you too. I know you have things coming out as well. So give us a preview of what's to come. Well, thank you for that because today is the book oh. birthday. Oh, happy so birthday. Really so this is published today. So take a look at that, please. It's Indigo Dreaming. And, you know, April and I talked about being from South Carolina. So it kind of celebrates the relationship between the people of the South Carolina Sea Islands and West Africa. And the illustrator is from Brazil. So the entire African diaspora is celebrated there. So nice. thank you, Christy. But Christy also, do you want to say something, Christy, about our next no, no, why don't you just tell, just give them a preview of what's to come there, the subject matter and. Yeah, so Christy gave me so much freedom. She told me that she wanted me to come up with a project that celebrated African-American women getting the vote, African-American women's suffrage. And I landed on the story of Ida B. Wells and, um, you know, the March of 19. <laughs> What year is it? The Women's March of 19. What year was it? 13? <laughs> I think it's 13. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful story. And the art is going to be amazing. And it's called Marching for the Vote. Marching right. for the Vote. Illustrator on that is Jerry Jordan, a new illustrator. This will be his first book, which is really exciting. 
and April. Mm -hmm. What tell us about what's coming? I know you have something. Yeah, me and the boss. It's book. It's book birthday was last month, September nineteenth. Um, it is a. I'm the illustrator, but the writer is Michelle Edwards. I mean, it's about a brother and sister. Um, of course, the big bossy older sister and a little brother, and they learn how to sew. It's a wonderful book. It's a real sweet book. It's real endearing. And my um, inspiration was two of my grandchildren, Miles and his sister, India. So that book is out now. You And so you can get that one. I think that's correct. October the 11th. My bad. October the 11th. What did I say? September? <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> October 11th, you can pre-order until then, but October 11th. And then the one on the horizon is Violet and the Frost King. And that was written by the late Virginia Hamilton and her son. And so I will be doing that particular book as well. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, no, everything sounds great, right? She is so... Um, the late Virginia Hamilton. Uh, this is a project that she was working on uh, before she passed, and her son Jamie Adolph is um, uh, working with me um, with that original text. And April mm -hmm. is going to be illustrating that, and very, very excited for that. Mm -hmm. And that's to come. I'm just I, quickly. I see checking a question the, from yeah. my my Audrey. I'm going to call you my little sister. <laughs> her her. <laughs> Her big sister is one of my best friends. And she says, any thoughts about a South Carolina picture book? If you if you have some thoughts, pass them our way. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think there's another one too in the chat for you, April. Uh, can you, um, do you see that? Will there be another collaboration in the future? Nope, um, it's on the bottom. I heard you say, yeah, there we go, it's highlighted. You created all the buildings first. Does that lend to how the art seems to always have something to discover? The art is so layered. Yes, I guess it would, Khadija. You're right, um, because it is layered. The process was layered. So you have to look closely to unfold all the layers. Yeah, it does. It lent, it did lend itself to that. Khadija, hi. <laughs> I love her name. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, thank you for all the lovely comments in the chat, everyone. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us. Um, I think that pretty much wraps it up. Erica, I'll hand it back to you. Well, thank you so much. I, I, I'm excited about this last question um, because it's asking where people can order mm -hmm. uh, the book. Light myself up so you can actually see me. Um, so I put in the chat um, a, an online bookstore that Dinah brought to my attention. Uh, where is it? The AALBC.com. Uh, and that, what, what is that, Dinah? It's one of the oldest running black bookshops mm -hmm. online. Is that right? Uh, and so I put in the chat the link uh, to each is for Harlem that you can purchase from there. It's also in the event page. Are there any other bookstores, ladies, that um, that you know of that have signed copies? Um, I don't know about signed copies, um, but uh, you know it's being carried by the all the indies, and obviously, you know Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all all retailers. Um, uh, so very out there and available. Well, that was really, really informative and inspiring and moving and beautiful. I could sit um, and listen to you all talk all night and look at the art and hear about the history. I actually live in Manhattan, so lucky me. I can, oh, I can just go uptown and enjoy it for myself, but I really feel like I learned um, so much and I get so much richer appreciation um, than I had before. So. Thank you all so much for spending your evening with us. We're really grateful for your time. And thank you, everybody uh, in the audience uh, who came to listen. And if you came in late, uh, you can always go back online uh, to catch the beginning. 
Uh, and if you really loved the conversation, you can like it below uh, by pressing that thumbs up um, and a reminder that you can also subscribe to the channel. Uh, and you can also, if this is your first event and you want to get on our newsletter, you can register for that at SamoaLive.com. All right. Thanks well, for having us, Erica. Yeah, it was wonderful. And we'll see you all again at the next Samoa Live event. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody.